Hi everyone, Justine Leslie here. Welcome to my YouTube channel and I help empaths empower their intuition and connect to their soul so they can step into their true power. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so before I jump into this video, because this is another juicy one, please like the video if the content resonates. Um, that will be really helpful to me so I know which videos um, and which kind of content essentially uh, you guys wanna see more of. And also hit the subscribe button so you can get notified when I put out new videos with this new content. Um, Cool. All right, let's jump into it, guys. Today's video is uh, I'm titling it Five Ego Traps That Are Almost Undetectable. And what I have to do is actually break down what an ego trap is. So let's start with what the ego actually is. Um, okay. So most people come to my channel, I notice, and most people, I work a lot with sensitive people and lots of empaths, lots of intuitives, um, but mostly they're at this stage of their life because they've gone through what I call a spiritual awakening or a dark night of the soul or a kundalini experience, um, a near-death experience, maybe a, psych um, a psychedelic experience of some kind. Anyway, they, they are um, going through something, right, that's not necessarily normally talked about um, uh, medically or anything like that. This is definitely a spiritual component of what happens to us. Um, so yeah, so let's just use the term spiritual awakening, whichever term that you actually resonate with, that's fine as well, but just to keep it consistent here in this video. Um, so people go through a spiritual awakening and they actually start realizing um, there's not one def definition of how to kind of describe what happens during a spiritual awakening. Everybody's experience is actually different, obviously. Um, but for the most part, what happens is you're starting to remember who you truly are and you start to unlearn um, what made you, you know, believe that you're this false self. So there's a lot of unlearning and there's also a lot of remembering, right? So I'd actually include those two as really the meat and bones of what actually does happen um, during a spiritual awakening. So with that being said, um, a key component of that is the ego, right? So basically, um, there's two parts of ourselves and we start discovering that we have both sides. So we have the soul and then we have the ego. So the ego is the um, mechanism and the tool because it is a tool. I have a video about the tools that we have for the human experience on another video. Definitely check that out. Um, but uh, we are given this tool, this ego, because that we need it for the human experience, okay? We need it to survive as human beings on this planet. It's not a negative thing. It is not a uh, curse. It is not, um, the goal in life is not to get rid of your ego, kill, continuing to kill the ego, right? Um, the overextension of the ego, on the other hand, is, is the issue, right? Which is why some people, most people have a spiritual awakening because they've been living their lives mostly as the ego, as the master, right? So for me, personally, I was living as the false self um, due to childhood trauma, um, due to uh, what I wanted to be perceived as, um, due to... Um, just my ego running the show. I was not connected to my spirit, my soul at all, right? So what happens during a spiritual awakening, which is, in my opinion, the most frightening part, um, is that your ego gets taken away. Um, and I would actually say about 99%. Um, people say the death of the ego, and it and this is a phenomenon. This is something that actually does happen. So spirit actually takes your ego away, 99%. And the reason I actually say 99% is because as human beings, as I've mentioned, we cannot be on this planet without an ego. We were here for that tool. We cannot, it cannot be taken away from us completely, okay? So very close to it though. At least that's how I felt. I felt I was up in the 99%, okay? And um, it gets taken away. So you just have your soul. So it's a soul's journey um, essentially is what your spiritual awakening is. Um, with that being said, when you go through a spiritual awakening, that time period, I'll never forget it. I know what it's like to not to, like I said, 99% of having your ego taken away. So a lot of that is, um, yes, we can look at it as euphoria or blissful, which is some of the feelings that I was feeling, but also at the same time, it was a little dangerous. It was a little um, extreme. It really... Um, again, it's because we really, um, you know, it's almost like my personality got taken away. It's very, um, it's a very intense experience that's not really meant, uh, you know, to be the norm, right? So what I mean by that is that when we start to come down, so my spiritual awakening was about nine years ago, and I would say 
It lasted for about five and a half years, almost six years, um, maybe even six and a half years. It's all blending these days, but um, it lasted for a really long time. I you gradually get the ego back and now my ego is in full swing um which is fine because like i said it is not a a negative thing any spiritual teacher that is really trying to the goal is for people to you know kill off the ego continuously it's not that's not the goal um the goal is to manage it and to be aware of it but you don't necessarily want to be without it okay so that being said sometimes when we get the ego back we (laughs) fall into what I call the ego trap, which is, and we can still, and here's the thing guys, because I think sometimes when we've been through those intense spiritual experiences where we've been without, we were like, we're never going to go back to a place where we use the ego as a master or we let it take over our lives or we let it um, be destructive in any type of way. Um, but it's so not true. Just because you went through that experience, the experience was to teach you about the awareness of the ego. It doesn't make you immune to ego traps. So what I'm trying to say I know is it's a long kind of preface before I get into this, but it's super important is that just because you've been through a spiritual awakening does not mean that you're never going to fall into these ego traps. And I actually titled um, almost, I said almost undetectable because sometimes when we're coming from, uh, and these are specifically kind of coming from an awakening, um, we think that we are immune and they are almost undetectable to our uh, enlightened eyes, if we want to say that, right? So, so basically, these are probably going to shock you. Um, I might be doing a little bit of shadow work here where I'm putting the shot, you know, the ego lives in the shadow, right? Um, so basically bringing that out and kind of, um, you know, at least some of these call me out sometimes um, and I'm sure that they will for you. So hopefully they resonate with you, but we are all about accountability. That's part of the spiritual experience is looking at our own shadows and really taking accountability for them, okay? So if any of these ego traps resonate, you got to let me know in the comments. I'm super curious. I know a few resonate with me, probably um, all uh, <laughs> uh, all five at some point um, did. Um, but uh, yeah, um, you know, at least uh, at least I'm admitting it. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully you guys will admit it too. Okay, so let's jump into it. All right, so number one, this one I hear so, so much. And again, these are very, most of these are very specific to coming down from a spiritual awakening and integrating back with our human selves and back into our ego. Um, I'm more woke than you. And being woke, being more woke means I'm better than you. This is the biggest, oh my God, all of these are big ego traps, but this one is a huge one because we think, and hello, guilty right here, um, is that by falling, by because we went through this intense experience, and I'm even a spiritual teacher these days from that very experience, right? Um, this uh, this is something that I actually pull on my family a lot. Um, and basically, uh, you have a different consciousness level. There's no way that you don't coming from uh, having a spiritual awakening. So there can be, um, and this is extremely normal, this feeling of specialness from having that experience because even though I do feel like the collective consciousness is waking up more and more these days, um, that uh, it's still not super common. Um, is it getting there? Kind of, but uh, not really. So it does feel like it has this specialness to it. Um, and anytime there's this specialness, um, it, it, it can bring on and go into the shadow side of that where we feel entitled, where we feel better than other people because we are enlightened uh, in some type of way. But the irony of that is that we're not enlightened if we think we're better than other people, right? Because that's the ego coming in, right? So there is no hierarchy of being better than other people. So you're awake, that's great. So you're conscious, that's great. But it doesn't make you any better than another individual. Um, and there is no level of wokeness. Um, there is, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just a fine line of specialness into entitlement. So this is a big, big one that we can find ourselves in. Um, again, I find myself probably in this one the most. Um, and you just got to check yourself, right? So that's what this is about. This is about awareness of the ego coming, 
coming through. But again, this might be very undetectable to some of us. So uh, keep this in mind. All right, so the second one. After healing, I'll never be triggered again. Okay. So I didn't touch on this in the beginning, but usually uh, there's so much to say about a spiritual awakening. And I also have other videos on it. So check it out on my YouTube channel um, in more detail. Like I said, there's a million topics about it, right? But this one is about the intense healing that we do, the intense spiritual healing that we do go through during uh, our awakening. So... And it could be very intense. And one of the reasons why I actually do call my uh, spiritual awakening radical is because uh, I did some very intense deep healing. It was, um, let's just say I feel like I went to hell um, and back, essentially. Uh, it was very emotionally stressful and emotionally um, draining. Um, I had to really heal from a lot of my childhood stuff. Um, I had to chill. Uh, also at the same time heal from a relationship that a toxic relationship um it was very it, it was I had to be very easy on myself and once I got through it I was like I'm never going through that again I can't believe I did the work I got here I you know I can't believe it here's the thing about healing that a lot of people don't really understand is that it's never really done can we get to a place of integration, of um, becoming um, whole again? Yes, absolutely. But there is never a finish line for our healing work, unfortunately. Um, there are, like I mentioned, there are milestones that we can get to where we um, can function differently um, and different milestones for different things that we're healing from everybody's healing from something different right um but we the ego comes through and says you know we're never going to be triggered again by this um and then when we get triggered by it again um we beat ourselves up right so for not being over it oh i hate that word i hate that phrase being over it what does being over it even mean um we really get through it we don't get over anything in my opinion um we really just get through it so um but it's okay to continue to try to get through it it might trigger you for the rest of your life it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean you failed at your spiritual awakening it doesn't mean that you're not enlightened it doesn't mean it means that you're a human being having a um experience experience with um having a human experience technically which is that we all need to heal from something in our lives nobody's perfect lives aren't look around this world is not perfect uh this world is actually ruled by the overextension of the ego but i won't get into that um but we beat ourselves up we fall into this ego trap of of saying oh well i've been through i've been through the ringer why is this happening to me again i must not um I must have not have done it right. I must not have healed all the way. And then we start beating ourselves up and the ego is coming through and saying, you should be healed by now. You should do this. You should do that. It's, it's such an ego trap. Again, I fall into this as well. I'm curious if anybody else does, but um, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> there is no uh, finish line essentially. And uh you're actually intended to be, your lifelong goal is to continuously heal yourself. Um, it's not going to end at any point. Does this mean, again, please don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Does this mean that you can't have fun? Does this mean that you won't hit milestones? Absolutely not. Life is meant to be enjoyed. It's meant to be in the highest vibration possible, joy, love, all of those things. But you can do all of those things while still healing from, from the things that you quote unquote thought that you healed from or you should have healed from. Um, but beating yourself up is doing nothing at all to you um, except making you feel Again, low vibrational, guilt, shame, you know, all of those things. Why are we doing this to ourselves? It's really the ego, right? Um, saying that we should be more evolved than that, right? Which is obviously not true. Okay, three, spiritual narcissism is something that a lot of people don't talk about. It's, it's really this, my way is the only way. 
fallen into this category too sometimes, but I check myself. Again, the awareness of the ego is the goal, um, not to be perfect. So basically what this means is that um, when I was going through my spiritual awakening, and I'm sure this resonates with a lot of you guys, again, put in the comments if it does or does not. Um, I just love to hear your experience because it's all different. But most of the time you get lots of truth um lots of truth from the creator of the divine god um however you want to the universe however you want to explain it so with that being said it feels very much like truth to you and it is truth it 100 percent is god's truth or universal truth in that way there's universal laws that are laws there's no interpretation there that's just how the universe is but with that being said a lot of people think differently than you um, and a lot of times we get into this ego trap of saying, no, my God says this, so you're wrong. Um, if we wanted to be in this category, we would just be religious because religion comes with a lot of dogma that's like this, right? My way is the only way. When in reality, religion really teaches one thing. It's really about love, right? Um, that's the defining factor there. But, um, we have this narcissism that it's our way, our beliefs are the only way, um, and uh, my way or the highway, and, and if you don't believe what I believe, then um, uh, then you're a, a, a terrible person or whatever you want to say, right? Whatever the ego decides to say that day. So that is definitely, obviously I said the word narcissism, it might be triggering some of you guys, but um, that is really where... Um, uh, the narciss narcissism is based in the overextension of the ego. That's really what it is, right? It's just the manifestation of that. Um, so basically, we can get into that trap and saying my way is the only way when it's not true. Um, trying to a good spiritual teacher will um, let you will teach from their perspective, their experience. Um, and their knowledge and their channeling or whatever that they actually do. And also say, um, if this doesn't resonate with you, that's fine. Instead of punishing you um, or uh, shaming you or anything along those lines that um, that uh, don't align with what they actually believe. I can actually honestly say that I, in my spiritual teaching, I don't fall into this category, thank God. Um, <laughs> I want you guys to believe whatever you guys want to believe. I don't want to be your guru. If none of this resonates with you, that's totally fine. Um, if religion resonates with you that's great um, it's completely up to you that's why I actually teach intuition because you must follow your own intuition with things this is how people get into cults I won't get too far into it but this is really how they do it is that they really believe somebody else has the answers when in reality you have the answers okay and I even said earlier everybody's spiritual awakening experience is completely different um, so people can feel like they are learning different things um, but uh, for the most part, it's really about what does your intuition say? And if it says something differently from what somebody's saying, um, go with that. Please, please go with that. Okay. All right. So the fourth ego trap. This one. Oh, God. This one's bad. Um, this one is I'm more spiritual because dot, dot, dot. Okay. So this could be filled in by because I don't eat meat, because I don't watch TV, because I don't watch the news because I don't drink alcohol, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I'm the first person to tell you guys that um, a lot has changed with me during my spiritual awakening. Um, it, it took me a while. I, I knew I was going to give up meat and alcohol eventually. It didn't happen at first. I think it actually happened three years into my awakening, uh, maybe four, maybe four. Um, but I knew it was going to happen intuitively, you know, God, universe, creator, divine, um, pretty much said, okay, you're done with that stuff. Uh, I'm giving you a warning. Uh, you know, it's, it's coming to an end. Um, I do watch TV. I watch reality TV. Um, I didn't so much when I was going through my awakening because I had other things to be doing. Um, and, uh, that kind of thing. So anyway, it, that's not the point. The point is you're not more spiritual than somebody because you do something that they do do or they don't do. Um, you're not more spiritual because you save animals. You're not more spiritual because you don't curse. You're, there's no, again, this comes down to a hierarchy. Um, only the ego wants to do a hierarchy. Um, <laughs> the soul does not. Uh, the soul does not. Um, you can be a very spiritual person and drink a lot of alcohol. Um, I see it a lot. Uh, I see a lot of empaths. Uh, you know, I had a problem with alcohol as well. We're super sensitive. Um, that tends to be... Uh, 
I'm making a blanket statement, but sometimes we can get more addicted to certain things and that kind of thing because we are sensitive. I won't go so much into that, but you're not more spiritual than somebody because, again, uh, you do or do not do something. Um, spiritual, what does that even mean, being spiritual, right? It's actually pretty hard for me to explain just the spiritual awakening. So what does spiritual actually mean? It can mean so many different things to certain people, right? Um, and, uh, and just like I'm a spiritual teacher, there are other people that have completely different beliefs and call themselves a spiritual teacher. Totally fine. It, they're, again, coming from their perspective. But there's nothing about I'm more spiritual than them because I do this or because I have a YouTube channel or, you know, whatever it actually is. There's no such thing. So this is a huge ego trap that we fall into that we think we're more than or you know create this hierarchy again so no one is more spiritual because they do this or they do that okay okay this last one we're already on number five hopefully you guys are still with me <laughs> sorry my nose is itchy okay this one is so good and such a good reminder and why i left it for last is i have to be enlightened all the time um i used the word enlightened a couple of times in this video what does that really mean? Um, in my opinion, from my perspective and experience, it's like this bliss feeling, like euphoria. Um, and it's an amazing, amazing feeling. But what I can definitely tell you is that it doesn't last. Um, and it's actually not intended to last. Uh, you're not supposed to be walking around and being enlightened all the time. Even, even the monks that meditate for 15 hours per day in the middle of the mountains, I even say that they are not enlightened all the time, okay? There's may very close maybe all of the time, um, but they are still in a human body and they are still human. So what does that mean? That means they still have an ego, okay? So I, I perceive enlightenment as the top, top of the highest vibrations and the ego is not involved. Um, but I don't find it possible for a human being to be that way. Um, and we can try and we can try and we can try and that's really kind of the goal right because we're always trying to be um very high vibration also really you know um as loving as possible as enlightened as possible as joyful as possible that's great to strive to be that way but you're never going to reach it at least 20 at least the rest of your life um 24 7 continuously absolutely not uh you're going to yell at your boyfriend um you're going to fib accidentally because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings um the ego is going to come through at some points in your life. You're a human being. And this is really about, um, and this happens so, so much coming from a spiritual awakening because we really are so connected to the soul. We kind of, at least from my experience, and I don't know if this is similar to yours, um, is that we really do get connected to the soul and we think that this is going to last, that we are going to be enlightened all the time in the rest of our lives. What the last stage of a spiritual awakening that a lot of people don't talk about is the integration. So you have to come back. You have to come back into society. You have to come back into um, uh, your body and you have to embody both the spirit and the human again and really figure out a way that works for you um you're going to be a completely new person you know it's basically a spiritual awakening is is like until you know being in a um uh you know the caterpillar you know in the cocoon and then now you're the butterfly but the butterfly is going to look different obviously you're completely changed but you're also going to have to integrate you don't completely um kill off the person you were before even though it might feel like that during your spiritual awakening there, that parts of the, of yourself, of your humanness, of your personality, they're going to come back. Um, just take what resonates and, and leave what doesn't. So you're going to be a changed person, but again, it's going to have to be, and I actually feel like this is pretty difficult. I know the whole experience with the spiritual awakening is difficult, but coming out of it is just as difficult um, because you, can, you have to figure out a way that you can integrate what this phenomenal um, spiritual metaphysical experience that just happened to you um, and really implement it back into the real world and take what, what you've learned and what you've healed from and move into this new life of yours. Um, 
but you're not going to be enlightened all the time you're not perfect just because you've been through a spiritual awakening and you've learned all of this okay no spiritual teacher is perfect nobody is perfect i have a political opinion i i fly off the handle when i get upset um there are certain things that we just still experience as a human being awareness is key consciousness is key um being aware of the ego is key but again falling into these ego traps can be very very um undetectable that was the best word i can kind of come up with and we may not even realize that we're trying to strive for things that are impossible um or uh not uh not uh part of our experience as being a human being um so it's so so important that um we understand that we are falling in these ego traps um and uh just being aware of the ego is really the whole point of what we actually of our spiritual awakening right uh is is the awareness part so okay hopefully that was helpful for you guys again um please put in the comments if any of this resonates with you i would love to hear uh about your experiences again everybody has had a different experience but if anybody falls in these ego traps i along the way sprinkled in the ones that i do um would love to hear your perspective on it um so go ahead and put it in the comments and again like this video if this was helpful or if you just liked it and want to support me uh and then also subscribe to this youtube channel for more videos similar to this Awesome. All right, guys, have a great day. I will see you in the next video. Bye.